Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In my opinion the content in this video is very interesting. It's a structure that not many people have heard of, but sadly there's not a lot of information to work with. There is a severe lack of photographs and diagrams, and by all accounts, a severe lack of interest by the experts. But what I'm showing you in this video is what I believe is another truly ancient rock cut tomb of Giza, something that predates most structures on the plateau, and almost certainly the 4th dynasty. This video is to merely get the structure onto the radar, and it's something that certainly needs further investigation. So, if you're on the ground at Giza, and if permission allows, if you can send me any videos or pictures of Mastaba G8884, that would be amazing. It is located east of the Tomb of Kai, south of the Cafre Causeway, and close by the Sphinx. It is built to the southeast of one of the old central quarries, and is carved directly from the bedrock. Before I get into the possible dating of the Mastaba, let's take a closer look at what information is currently available. It was excavated in the early 1930s by the brilliant Selim Hassan, who does write about it in a report that I've linked in the description below. He describes it as older than the Mastabas that surround it. In front of it there is a large courtyard measuring 40 metres by 5.6 metres, which is pretty much the whole length of the Mastaba. Mud brick walls bound the southern and eastern sides of the courtyard. The lower parts still remain, and interestingly, they display the palace facade style of decoration, just like we see on the Tomb of Kenkawas and the Tomb of Kai, two structures that show clear evidence of predating the 4th dynasty. Although the rock-cut Mastaba, which is the subject of this video, shows no signs of having the palace facade on its outer surface, it is interesting that the mud brick wall that surrounds the courtyard does. Sadly, I can't find any photographs or diagrams of this wall. There is an opening on the eastern side of the palace facade wall that opens to a road known as the Street of Priests. And, to the south, there is also another opening leading to a small brick chamber which Hassan marked on the map as a store. Now, like the tomb of Kenkawas, the rock-cut tomb G8884 was once cased in fine Chura limestone, a casing that was 1.8 metres thick, a thickness that gradually decreased the further up the structure you went. A few of the blocks were still in situ in the 1930s, and they probably still are today. In front of the main entrance there was a small curtain wall, partly cut into the rock and partly built of brick. 87 centimetres high and 2.3 metres in length. Looking at this picture of the Mastaba, and you can see just how weathered the bedrock is. Different beds of limestone erode at different rates, giving this undulating appearance. It would be interesting to know whether the casing stones covered this undulation or not, because that will give us a strong indication of when the Mastaba was built. I'd need to inspect the entire structure myself, and the interface between the casing stone and the bedrock to speculate further. The upper portion does look flatter than the basal areas, and could have been cut when the fine Chura limestone was added, and we do know that the bedrock was worked specifically for the casing stones, because there is a 25cm deep cut in the floor of the courtyard, all along the Mastaba's eastern edge. The limestone casing stones have been shown to slot in. Now. This structure could well have been in use at the same time as the pyramids, because of a number of comparable observations. Firstly, there is no inscriptions of any kind inside, which is quite strange for a Mastaba on the Giza Plateau, including those that surround it. But it's precisely what we see inside each of the three pyramids, as well as the inner chapels of the Tomb of Kai. The other evidence is regarding the sarcophagus, which I'll come to later. When you enter the Mastaba there is a mortuary temple, entirely cut into the native bedrock, measuring 8.3 by 3.4 metres. The floor of the centre part of the chapel is paved with limestone blocks, as are the walls of the entranceway. On the left when you walk in, there is a rectangular basin, and this is close to two circular depressions that are sunk into the floor, probably for libation tables. 
One interesting detail that reminds me of the subterranean chamber of the Great Pyramid is that there is also a dead end corridor leading from the northern wall. It is actually a descending corridor around 1.2 by 1.35 meters in size and extending into the bedrock for only 5 meters. Apparently, the end of this passage has been left rough. In the western wall, there is a false door cut directly into the bedrock. And on the right hand side of the same wall, there is also a rectangular opening. The doorway is 1.2 meters high and 1.1 meters in width, and it opens up into another descending passageway. This one leads to a burial chamber, which was once blocked with a large block of limestone. The chamber is rectangular, around 5.2 meters by 2.7. Now we see another similarity to the Great Pyramid and the Pyramid of Khafre, because inside there is a sarcophagus of red granite that contains no marks or inscriptions of any kind. Its exterior measurements were 2.21 by 1.01 meters by 78 centimeters. The sarcophagus was finely polished and the lid was made from one piece of solid granite, which was found to be resting on the sarcophagus. As expected, it had been opened and emptied in antiquity. There is a cavity on the western wall of the burial chamber, maybe for burial goods, and there was also a square hole in the floor in the southeastern corner, and this was probably for a canopic chest. The only finds from this rock cut tomb are these alabaster cups and saucers from the main burial chamber, and also this pair of castanets from just outside the main entrance. Their age is unknown. Some authors have tried to offer a calculated guess as to who occupied this tomb. And because of the large size of the mastaba, the large courtyard outside and also the fine granite sarcophagus, it must have been for someone of importance. Mikhail Bord believes it is the tomb of Queen Kamarinebti I, daughter of Khufu, a wife of King Khafre, and also the mother of King Menkore, for reasons outlined in a paper that I've linked below. Although I don't have a lot of evidence to go on, it is possible that this mastaba is the same age of the tomb of Kenkawas and the tomb of Kai. Firstly, they are all in close proximity on the edges of the central field of mastabas. They are all rock-cut tombs. They are the three largest tombs in the area and are also oriented in the same direction. The tomb of Kai in G8884 also have perfectly cut southern and eastern faces, but the north and west faces of both mastabas look rough. The chapels of the two rock cut mastabas are both perfectly symmetrical, and with G8884, the burial chamber and the two descending passages don't have the same symmetry and could well be later features, as you can see in this old diagram. The burial chamber does sound like it could be 4th dynasty, with a granite sarcophagus similar to the one in the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid, and also similar to the sarcophagus of Khufu's eldest son, Kawab. We know that the Mastaba of Rua of the early 5th dynasty is built against the rock-cut tomb, so it certainly predates the 5th dynasty. And for various reasons, I do believe that Menkore's mother was buried here mainly because of the occupants of the nearby stone-built mastabas, such as her servants, and the occupants of the tomb on the so-called Street of Priests were the priests of Menkore's mother. But is this another pre-4th dynasty structure? It is certainly possible, but with no great analysis done in the field by a geologist, it is impossible to say for sure. I can speculate that it is, because the weathering at the base of the structure does look a lot more extreme than the weathering of the surrounding 5th dynasty mastabas. And because the chambers and passages that come off the chapel lack the symmetry we see inside the chapel itself, the same symmetry we see in the tomb of Kai, that leads me to think there is more than one stage of construction. Then we can see that this mastaba has the same orientation as the tomb of Kai. The final piece of evidence is a palace facade ornamentation that is seen on the mud brick wall of the courtyard, something you wouldn't expect to find at Giza in the 4th and 5th dynasties. There is a road that leads up to the rock cut mastaba marked number 5 on this diagram, and shown here on the images from the Airpano website. Maybe this was in fact an ancient roadway that led to the tomb, but what was at the other end? 
Interestingly, after translating a French paper on the Mustaba that I've linked below, it explains in detail how the tomb must have been for the Queen of Khafre and mother of Menkore. Interestingly, according to conventional Egyptology, that means that the Mustaba must have been built during Khafre's reign, a time when the quarry to the northwest was still very much operational to build the pyramid. Isn't that a bit odd, that the Egyptians built a huge tomb for the king's own wife on the edge of a quarry? Or does this prove that the quarry was long out of use when the Mustaba was created? Or does it prove, as I suspect, that this is actually a pre-4th dynasty structure that was reused by the Queen? After looking at all the evidence, I do believe that Central Giza was an early dynastic or even pre-dynastic ritual landscape associated with the Festival of Sokar, and I believe the natural bedrock to the south of the Khafre Causeway was shaped and had tombs and other structures dug into it in these long forgotten times. Giza does have a history older than the 4th dynasty, and I'm sure there is so much more to find in the central field. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.